my name is Courtney and this is Classics with Courtney. Depending on when I upload videos, this might be a new location for you guys. I'm just trying to get the best lighting possible so you get to see all my baby kid shelves. And today I'm going to be doing my summer book haul. So these are all the books that I bought since London. I haven't bought a ton of books this summer, but I feel like I haven't been reading a ton also, or at least in August I haven't been reading a lot. I think this is a substantial amount and a lot of the books I have read I even have reviews for some of them. But without further ado let's get into this summer, August, whatever it is book haul. One of the books I bought while I was home was Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. This has been out since May I believe. This is the first book in a new duology and our main character has to disguise herself as a boy so that she can find out why people are hunting her down to kill her. I have a whole review talking about this on both Goodreads and my channel. It is a very ranty review. I was not a fan of this book. I believe I've already talked about it in a wrap-up. I've already talked about it in a review, so we don't need to remember this right now. We don't need to think about this one right now. Another book I bought since being home is another 2017 release, and that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, which is now a duology. She's going to have another companion book, and I absolutely adore this book. It's one of the best books I've read this summer. I think this takes place in the Victorian era. Our main character, Monty, is going to be the owner of an estate, but he's going to go on one last romp with his best friend and his sister, and Monty is hoping to maybe even get his feelings out to Percy because this will be the last time he sees him for a very long time. Again, I have a review of this book because I really, really adored this book. So if you want to know all of my thoughts about it, definitely go check it out. The next book I have is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I read this during Booktubeathon and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it as much as I was hoping to. Again, I have another full review of this book so you can check out all of my thoughts about it. This again is another 2017 release. I've been doing really good with the releases. So yeah, this was good, wasn't great, I have more thoughts. Another book I have, which is also a 2017 release, I believe, is Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. Again, I read this during Booktubeathon. It is a fun, fluffy, summer contemporary read, and it kind of has that old movie, old Hollywood vibe to it, but it's not really in Hollywood. It's like in Northern California. I really, really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was super cute and fluffy, just what I wanted. It has that whole thing of trying to figure out who your secret email pen pal person is, which is kind of fun, and I just love it. Now we're going to get into the books that I haven't actually read yet, but I have hauled. The first one is A Midsummer's Night Dream by William Shakespeare. I've read like 13 Shakespeare, 12 Shakespeare's. This is one of the most famous or was popular and I haven't actually read it. It's really short so I decided to pick it up and I still want to finish it this month if I can. If you don't know, this is the Shakespeare where everybody's falling in love with the wrong person because of like a Cupid-like figure that's kind of making them do things. I don't think this will ever be my favorite Shakespeare just because I'm a tragedy girl all the way through, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. The next book I have, which is also on my TBR for this month, is I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. So I've been picking up a lot of contemporary recently, but when I heard the promise of this one, I really wanted to read it. Our main character is kind of obsessed with Korean dramas, I think, and so she decides to take all the rules from Korean dramas and apply them to her love life and try to see if it works. As a fan of Korean dramas, this book just speaks to me on a whole new level, and I'm really excited to read it. The next book I have is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. I've been hearing really mixed things about this book, but it was 30% off for me with my Barnes & Noble member card, and I'm just really intrigued by the plot. This book kind of centers around a matriarchy. It's like three princesses that were raised separately that are trying to kill each other. I don't know, that just sounds... It just sounds really cool. And I know it's been kind of hit or miss and it's definitely been kind of meh reviews, but I want to check it out and see for myself. And the last book I have is A Million Junes by Emily Henry. I absolutely adored The Love That Split the World. It's like a book I know I shouldn't like because it had a lot of things that I normally don't like in books at all, but for some reason it just, I just loved it. I don't know why. So I knew when she had a new book that I had to pick it up. I haven't read this yet, but I'm really excited to read it. And so now we're going to be getting into my mangas and graphic novels. First up, I have A Silent Voice by Yoshitoki Oima. I have volumes four through seven, which completes the series. And I think these covers are really, really pretty. Because I've already finished and talked about this. And I'm excited that I own and have completed the whole series. I still need to go watch the movie. This follows a young man who, as a child, bullied a deaf girl in his elementary school. And it's kind of his 
journey through forgiveness. He's trying to become a better person and he's meeting up with this girl and trying to be friends with her. Also a really complicated and messy story. This story acknowledges all the problems of bullying. Can he ever be forgiven for what he's done? Is he allowed to move forward? Is he allowed to be friends with her? I think this series overall is really good, but I did have my flaws. Next I have Saya's 6 and 7. This is a sci-fi adventure. This is by Fiona Staples and Brian K. Vaughan. It is absolutely gorgeously drawn and it's a very wonderful, wonderful story. I really enjoy this series. It's just a lot of fun and it's been all over booktube, so if you're into comics, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Last but certainly not least, I have Avatar The Last Airbender comics. This is North and South volumes 2 and 3 which completes this arc of the series and it might complete the Avatar The Last Airbender comics for now at least because I haven't heard word of them printing out a new comic this coming year. Hi guys, so I actually made a classic rookie mistake and forgot to do an outro and since I cannot film at this time and I really want to get this video out for tomorrow, I thought I would just do it this way. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later and keep it classy.